Senator Capitol. Thank you very much. And I want to thank the chairman, the ranking member, and also my uh, cohort on the uh, Subcommittee of Transportation and Infrastructure. I know our staffs and our staffs have been working very well on this. We are very close to a bipartisan bill, and we have uh, such mutual desire to get this done. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, re I refuse to be pessimistic. So some of the things that we've looked at are regulatory improvements to expedite project deployment, many of the things that you've talked about, supporting uh, utilization of uh, our natural infrastructure and also other uh, other uh, ways to reduce costs and increase resiliency. We've talked about this. In terms of the pre-disaster mitigation, we did pass, I chair the Homeland Security a Subcommittee on Appropriations, which funds FEMA. We, do, we did have in there this past year a pre-disaster uh, pre mitigation fund that I think is gonna be very helpful for big and small communities, uh, particularly those, I would start, I guess, with those that have repetitive issues, uh, which my state of West Virginia, we have several of those. So I'm gonna open, I wanna talk about economic recovery has had divergent paths for rural and urban America. I, I live in an urban state, I mean a rural state, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our biggest city is 50,000. I wouldn't say that's too urban. Um, beautiful state, but, you know, we have declining tax revenues. We have issues uh, in terms of um, uh, difficulty getting from place to place. We have a lot of deficient bridges. We're in the top five for our deficiency in bridges, and I want to make that a separate question. But I, d I didn't know, starting with you, Mr. Reiner, uh, do you see... Where do you see the biggest obstacle for rural America in terms of the next highway bill and how uh, you mentioned lack of capacity in terms of being able, not lack of capacity, but the capacity it takes to, to, to meet all the challenges of the regulatory environment, uh, and that could be streamlined. If you could uh, dig into that a little bit for me. Uh, Senator, uh, uh, thank you for, for that question. We would certainly, uh, as, as we look to the future, you know, really say that maintaining the the uh, the formulary and the formula funding is important to us in rural states right. from a standpoint of, of of quick and efficient use of the money and and then in in terms of of regula regulations we do think there are ways to streamline specifically in the stewardship oversight uh, type agreements to make them simpler and easier to understand and 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 less onerous in terms of regulation mr. Braceros, do you have a comment on that? Yes, thank you, Senator. You know, the state of Utah is interesting in that as a state, we're doing tremendously well from an economic growth perspective, but that growth is taking place really in our five, six urban counties. Right. And we have 23 counties that Governor Herbert is really focused on that are not doing as well. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at aspects of how our transportation planning, we can come in and provide transportation planning services for these communities. We're doing it with state dollars. And what we're doing is we're asking them the question, you know, what can we do to help you become the community of your dreams? Mm -hmm. And then how can transportation help facilitate that? The governor's bringing all the state cabinet agencies together on this mission of trying to help these communities kind of develop that uniqueness that might give them that little bit of advantage. We're trying to move state jobs out into rural Utah mm -hmm. and provide the opportunity for state employees to telecommunicate more so that they can still have a state job, but they can do it from rural Utah. Mm -hmm. So. I think any types of flexibility you can provide in the, in the program to allow states to use the funding to be able to help these communities, because there's not one size fits all. Right. I can go to so many rural counties and it's gonna have different issues. Right. Um, Ms. Wicks, let me, I'm gonna shift to my bridge question because I'm gonna imagine in Delaware you've got quite a few bridges. Um, we have uh, quite a few deficient bridges and what we've, what we've found, I think, and I think we're trying to remedy this in our legislation is if a governor has a choice to build a five mile, you know, four lane highway or fix a deficient bridge. I mean, we all, you know, we all know what, what's, what's gonna have a bigger kick back, uh, back home. Not to say they're ignoring deficient bridges, but you, you have to set priorities. What are you finding in, term, in Delaware with your bridge reconstruction and what could we do in this bill to help with that? Well, I think you're right. Um, you know, rehabbing a bridge and its uh, substructure is not very sexy. Right. So something, another project can certainly uh, seem to get a better headline. But um, so um, we have maintained a rehabilitation approach. And so we have been able to educate our legislators and our elected officials and the public that preventative care will then 
yield great rewards mm -hmm. financially than having to wait too long and then we have a reconstructive um, way approach to, to the bridges. And uh, this has served us well and we were able to have that uh, timely um, inspection to be able to act upon that, to use technology to make the assessments and be able to uh, you know, um, efficiently combine improvements into a package that's either done by our maintenance folks or that we put it out to bid. So I think trying to be able to um, communicate the benefits of doing that early rather than waiting and how much more cost of costly those improvements will be. Right. And just the whole sense of safety to the traveling public right. and not seeing the postings and, you know, school children's having to, you know, go, go around and school buses. So, um, you know, that message is something we've just continued to drive home year after year and it's, it has paid off. All right. Thank you all very much.